A Chevy e-truck. But me and my buddies want to get away on a rough, tough expedition. What works for us is my rough, tough sport truck. Chevy S10 Maxi Cab. It's got room for all our survival gear. And more room inside than any compact pickup ever. So bring on the wild, bring on the mob. Ah, there's nothing like roughing it. Hey, if it doesn't fit my S10, it doesn't fit my life. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Nothing. In college basketball tonight at the Rosemont Horizon, the Loyola Ramblers will take on the North Carolina State uh, Wolfpack. That game starts at 7.30. Loyola is 0-2. North Carolina State is 2-0. Up in DeKalb, the well, uh, DePaul Blue Demons will open the season. They'll face the Northern Illinois Huskies. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, the Ray Meyer Show, the coach and I will talk about tonight's game, and we'll take it apart as only the coach knows how. Meanwhile, the Fighting Illini will face Oklahoma tonight for the championship of a Thanksgiving Classic in Honolulu, Hawaii. Lowell Hamilton scored 14 points last night. He's the young man from Providence St. Mel, a freshman playing for Lou Henson. And Illinois, 72, Hawaii, Loa, 45. The team they'll play, Oklahoma, beat Marshall last night, 81 to 70. Let's take a look at college basketball from last night. A great early season matchup for the Duke Blue Devils against the St. John's Redmen. And it was Walter Berry having his best day in the college ranks. 35 points as they played tough the whole way. Watch the All-American guard, Johnny Dawkins. He'll go in for the layup. He will miss it on a great attempt. But a teammate's right there, squeezing on in. Louis Carnaseca says he doesn't need the sweater back this year, but he does need Chris Mullen at guard for him. 21 seconds left in this contest. Duke with the ball. Here's Dawkins outside. Yes! And the Duke Blue Devils go up ahead, 71-70. Redmen have a chance to win it, but Mark Jackson misses the shot, and Duke wins by a point over St. John. In another of the Alaska shootout games, way up in Anchorage, the Tar Heels of North Carolina, ranked either first or second, depending on the poll you watch, took on the Missouri Tigers. Here's Kenny Smith down the middle of Monster Slam, 84-63. And North Carolina wins, keeping Dean Smith happy. In the third of that great Alaska shootout contest last night, the running Rebels faced the defending champion Villanova Wildcats, who were decimated by graduation of Stan Jones for UNLV with a big slam. That'll make the highlight reels. The Rebs win by 22. Now checking high school scores. Simeon last night all over Calumet. Westinghouse whipped Schurz. And Gordon Tech by 20 over Waukegan West. Providence St. Mel will make Lowell Hamilton proud. They beat Oak Park last night. Rich Central over Eisenhower, Blue Island Eisenhower. And Downers Grove, 60, Timothy Catholic, 43. Well, the college football regular season is winding up to a close, and there are a number of conference races up for grabs. Now, that means lucrative bowl games for a few. One of the chosen few, the University of Tennessee. They need a win today over Vanderbilt to win the Southeast Conference title outright and a trip to the Sugar Bowl. It looks like they're not having much trouble down at Nayland Stadium. 93,000 on hand. Volunteers are wasting no time. Here's Daryl Dickey to Eric Swanson. Catches it at the nine and goes in for the touchdown. Six points. The Volunteers led 17-0 right there in the first period. And now at halftime, it stands Tennessee update. 27 for Tennessee and Vanderbilt nothing that is at halftime. And we'll be back in just a moment. Final sale. For one day only, this Sunday, Collector's Art returns to the Chicago area for their final art sale before Christmas. Over 3,000 beautiful oil paintings to be sold out at $29 or less. Giant sofa size oils, $29. Incredible. Plus hundreds of gallery oils like you see here at a fraction of their retail value. This Sunday only, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. in Arlington Heights at the Arlington Park Hilton. In Oak Brook Terrace at the Holiday Inn. In Oak Lawn at the Hilton. In Skokie at the Holiday Inn. In Homewood at the Sheridan. In Waukegan at the Sheridan. In Naperville at the Sheridan. And in Maryville, Indiana at the Holiday Plaza. Polo isn't just a game, it's a tradition, a way of life. One that is captured by Ralph Lauren in his clothing and in polo. Ralph Lauren's sporting scent for men. Now you can go everywhere with a versatile polo classic suitor. This generously sized garment bag with a deep roomy outside pocket and adjustable shoulder strap, just $22.50 with any polo fragrance purchase of $16 or more. Available at Lord & Taylor. Well, in college basketball in Springfield, Massachusetts, the tip-off classic, the Hall of Fame game, featuring number one Georgia Tech with John Sally and Mark Price, their All-Americans, and Bruce Dalrymple, their All-American guard, up against the Michigan Wolverines, Richard Relford, Antoine Jobert, Gary Grant, and all that group. And Michigan has the lead by two points over Georgia Tech. They are midway through the first period at the Springfield Civic Center in Springfield, Massachusetts. The halftime report continues here now. Auburn and Alabama will hook up in about oh, two hours from now. 
here on Channel 7. Now, of course, if Tennessee can win, it's meaningless for Auburn and Alabama. If Tennessee loses, then the SEC championship will go to the winner of one of those two teams, Alabama or Auburn. But let's go back to high school football now and Soldier Field, where Tim and Mike and Dennis Green are standing by live. 14-7, Lane Tech leading Mount Carmel. Gentlemen, it's all yours. All right, JR, looking mighty slick as always, and we're feeling pretty slick out here, too, with a 14-7 football game. And uh, really, everything we could have asked for, Mike. That's right, Mount Carmel, uh, the favorite here, but Lane Tech uh, leading this game 14-7. And right now, Dennis Green is on the sidelines with Mount Carmel coach Frank Lenti. Dennis? Tim and Mike, I've got coach here. Coach, an outstanding first half on both teams, but what do you think it's going to take for you to get back in there and get that uh, seven points you need to make up? I'll tell you what, Dennis, our three-week layoff has shown greatly here in the first half. We're a little lax. We're not tackling. We're not blocking as crisply as we were at the end of the season. All we've got to do is tune up our assignments and get ourselves mentally in tune to play 24 minutes of great Mount Carmel football. Well, the first half, you showed that explosiveness offensively and the big play defense capability. So now it's just a matter of getting back in the groove, you feel. Right, exactly. Like I said, you know, we've only been hitting each other for three weeks. And Lane Tech has been playing people steadily right along. And they show a little bit of sharpness and crispness that we're not showing at this present time. And that's what we talked about is a, at halftime, is we have to come out and play 24 minutes of Mount Carmel football. We have to play intense, and we have to play consistent. Okay, Coach, thank you. Good luck in the second You're half. You're welcome, Dennis. Thank you. Okay, well, I tell you, it's going to be an exciting second half. I think Coach Lente said it just right. You know, Mount Carmel has been out of the playoffs for a long time because they won it so early, and it really has been a factor. But I think when we look at the explosiveness of their football team, a seven-point deficit is really not that much. Tim and Mike, up to you. Well, you're absolutely right, Dennis. Seven points is nothing, as we've seen in this game. Let's take a look at some of the highlights, Mike, and we'll just show you how quickly seven points can appear on the scoreboard. A couple of times, Lane Tech appeared to be completely stopped by their own mistakes, and here, third and long. I'm sorry, this is the first play of the, uh, of the 51 game. 51 really. yards to number 27, Ray Kalma. He breaks it down the sidelines before being knocked out of bounds, and it set up the first touchdown. Now, Lane Tech had got driven all the way back out to about the 30-yard line, but watch what happens here on the pitch. This time to Chris Spade. He goes all the way down to the one. After this play, they got knocked all the way back, and then they got a gift here. He's looking for Kalma. It is tipped by Terry Ward right into the hands of Milanovan Popovich, and that was the first Lane Tech touchdown. James Washington got one back for Mount Carmel to make it 7-7 on that short inside slant. And then watch here. This was a critical mistake here Mike Dankel the quarterback probably should not have pitched the ball and it gave Lane Tech field position good field position here comes the inside reverse to Popovich and he does it all 29 yards for a score a great piece of individual running and that's how we stand at 14 7 Timmy Dennis Green if you're still around and you can hear us so I'm, I'm interested in his reaction as we go out for the second half point flip Dennis do you think Popovich has big time capabilities or, uh, or is his speed going to be a problem but I tell you what he does. He can make the key plays. And I think there are a lot of people that are going to be watching him now simply because, you know, going into the game in the beginning of the season, uh, he did not have that many outstanding plays. But the playoffs, he's probably been one of the most viable players. He really can be a factor. I agree with him. I think that uh, that's, in that's an interesting point. Obviously, Milovan Popovich is a money player. <laughs> when, when stuff's on the line, he produces. Those are the statistics, and they couldn't be too much more even. A uh, little disparity in the rushing yardage for Lane Tech. Popovich got a lot of them on that 30-yard touchdown run. As a matter of fact, that's the difference, those 30 yards. We talked about Popovich uh, doing well in the playoffs, and now in uh, seven playoff games, he has caught uh, 10 touchdown passes, scored another on a run. You look at some of the uh, rushing, too, that Popovich, that 29 yards all in one run. Chris Braid, who really kind of is their second leading uh, rusher there behind Don Cochran, he chipped in with 17 yards, but a lot of them were very key. And, of course, Ray Kalma has got two receptions, too, so they can't, the Mount Carmel cannot uh, just yeah. concentrate on Popovich. Carmel's done a good job of stopping Cochran. Uh, and, and Lane has done a pretty good job on Washington, too. He's generally accustomed, Mike, to picking up more yardage than that. And I think, uh, by and large, they've done a fairly good job of keeping Callaway contained. Well, if that's one of the keys, certainly they have two great wide receivers with speed, Callaway and Nate Turner, also number 85. Callaway has uh, seen some double coverage this afternoon, but a couple times he was open, and uh, Danko just couldn't get him the ball because of uh, intense lane tech pressure. Well, I, I'm sure that you echo my feelings here. I'm real happy to be here. I mean, this is really a nice situation. Uh, the crowd is not exactly, uh, what would you call, overflowing, but uh, it's, it's healthy. 
and uh, the people are out here to watch their favorite teams. Well, as we mentioned before, Tim, maybe somehow, some way, the state can come up with an idea to incorporate the prep bowl as part of the state playoff system, and that, in, in turn, would generate uh, yes. renewed interest in this game as it should be. Well, high school sports, like anything else, so there are politics involved, whether it's racing, okay. whether it's uh, just plain old, uh, you know, banking, whatever. The businesses uh, involve some politics, and there are some politics that would prevent perhaps something like that happening, but it, it would be nice to see. Well, you know, Tim and Mike, I tell you, even though there's not a lot of people here, you can feel the electricity on the sidelines, particularly over here on this side with Lane Tech. You know, this is a chance for them to have that public league upset. Two great traditions, as we mentioned before, Lane Tech, the north side power, Mount Carmel, the parochial school south side power. I tell you, both teams want this game very badly. It's what high school sports is all about. I agree, Dennis. Uh, there's there's no question the desire is really intense on both sides. Uh, a great deal of bragging rights go along with winning this game. Besides the Catholic Public League issue, the North-South issue, just your doggone team pride. Mount Carmel uh, has got tremendous tradition in Soda's Lane. Tim, we're set for the second half kickoff. Chris Calloway will receive for the caravan back at his 10-yard line. Cochran with the kick. It's end over end, and again, Calloway lets it go over his head. I'm sure Lane Tech is very delighted to see that happen. They would not want Callaway with the ball in a big field in front of him. Cochran has a pretty good leg for a guy who doesn't really pride himself in being, uh, you know, a kicker. Well, that's what's surprising that Lane Tech doesn't attempt field goals because it is strong. Uh, maybe one of the problems he doesn't get a lot of height on the ball. He apparently is a line drive kicker, but he's 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 found the end zone what three times now? Three times. Holy cow! Lighten up, Mr. Cochran. He's got to make up for the fact that Mount Carmel defense has been keying on him. He really hasn't had a lot of room to run. He's 6'1", 220, a very strong running back. Right now, it's the Mount Carmel offense trying to do something about that 14-7 deficit. They see Bill Garrett, the strong linebacker for Lane Tech, and he's involved in the tackle just as we key on him. Get Lance number. Bonner with the carry. Picked up close to three or four yards on the play. And Carmel's going to be looking now at its second and seven. You see Garrett getting the defensive signals from the sidelines. Even freshman football on a B level, coaches are flashing in the sideline, the, uh, the signals. And uh, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but the sophistication that has come to high school football is really staggering. These guys spend hours and hours and hours and days and weeks getting themselves ready for this moment. And there's a nice pass up the middle for the tight end for Lane Tech for a tight end for the Mount Carmel Caravan. Mike Dilger and A.J. Wackel will help make the stop. Again, the little quick inside fake to James Washington, number 42. Danko pulls it out of his belly. Or actually, uh, number 33, Damar White. Danko pulled it out of his belly and jumped up top and hit Dilger. First and 10 for Mount Carmel at their own 36-yard line. Another fake inside by Danko. He's going long this time. He's got his receiver out there. It's Callaway. It's a foot race, and Callaway is going to win it. No, he's pulled down by Brian Aranza. Number 11 against number 11. Well, you got to give him some credit to Brian Aranza. You see him limping there. He got beat on this coverage here. Simply one on one, Callaway outraced him, but he saved the touchdown. Callaway's fifth reception of the afternoon. He turned it on. I thought he'd run away from him. Mike, that, is a, that is a great play by Aranza because, you know, every time you can stop him, even if it's on the one-inch line, you got to set him up and line him up all over again, and anything can happen. We saw Lane with a first and goal on the one, and they wound up back on their own 20. One thing you won't see is the option here. Well, you're right. It's a straight handoff up in the middle of the Lane Tech defense. Lance Bonner got the call. Scott Majeski and Bart Kirkwood on the stop. It appeared to have stopped him short. One of the uh, Mount Carmel running backs moved on the play. A legal procedure. Well, that's just what we're talking about. If you stop him, you make a mistake like that, and now they're forced back just as Lane was forced back early on in the game. I don't see Washington out there now, the big running back for Mount Carmel. And now is number 33, Demar White. Danko gets the play from Coach Frank Lenthe on the sidelines. And Caravan has been pushed back now to the six-yard line. Washington a little... Uh, we'll have to find out. Maybe Coach Green can find out if he's hurt or just fallen into his favor or what. But he, he, of course, is the guy who scored the first touchdown for Mount Carmel. 
and would figure to be in there in a short yardage situation. It's a draw play, and then once again, DeMar White is stopped by Ruben Casillas. And number 52, Holvik Vartanian. 